Okay. Amen. Well, praise. praise God. Oh. We thank God tonight for his mercy and his grace. And again, this is Rise of Michigan Baptist Church, Rev. C.L. Franklin. And tonight we come again with the, with the teaching for, for tonight. Uh, we continue from uh, Book Romans we've been dealing with. And, and uh, we are on the ninth chapter of Romans tonight. If you remember last last Bible study, we, we, we entered into uh, the explanation that after Paul had talked about the the the, the uh, security of the believer, and that nothing was able to separate uh, us from the love of God in chapter 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 eight. And that should have been the closure. But then he dropped this 9th, 10, 11 chapter on us, and I explained last Bible study that it is Paul saying to the Jews that that says that we are saved by grace through faith, this grace by through faith doctrine. Then what are the Jews going to do? Says they kind of caught up in the law thing. So what what are they what are they position? And that's what he's explaining there. Has God has God thrown them away? Or does they have a purpose? And we say to you tonight that certainly God has a plan and both purpose and plan for for the Jews because remember salvation is of the Jews. He picked them, he chose them out of all the nations of the world. He picked this little straggling group of nomads and, and made them his own. Yeah. They, they became uh, uh, his vehicle in which he would touch the rest of the nation. He called them a nation of priests and their job was to was to sh let their light shine before the other heathen nations that that they may come into uh, a, a, a relationship with him through the Jews, and and then but but the problem was is that the Jews failed. They failed. They they they, they closed ranks and left everybody else out. And so so Paul Paul is explaining now that. You know, you can't, you remember, you can't be saved by the law and this kind of thing, that it's by grace you're saved, that, that God has, didn't leave the Jews out, but he has a specific plan and purpose for them, that, that they were to deny uh, and reject him, that the, that the, that the, the Gentiles may be, be, may be adopted into this, into this family. And so the 19th and 11th chapter is what Paul is, is explaining, that God has has a purpose for what he did and, and it was all worked out. His all his all the plan was all laid out before the foundation of the world. And so that, and that's how God operates. There's there's nothing that happens that God has not decreed to happen. Uh, I, I say there are two wills that, that is the, the revealed will that God gives and then said the eternal will. And most of us the creature always mess up with the revealed will because he he can't stay in law, but the eternal will is always in place and to make all things work together for the good, for those who love him and call according to his purpose. We, we talked last week about, about the sovereignty, that big word, the sovereignty of God, that God picks and chooses. And I said again that he picked Israel. He said, not because you were born in any other nation, but he chose because he wanted to choose out of his own good pleasure. He chose, and you cannot have a relationship with him unless he chooses you. Help us, Lord. I, I gave you some words last last Bible study. Uh, we, we talked about this word uh, sovereign, meaning that God does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, to whom he wants, because he rules and he owns everything. Huh? It all belongs to him. Yes. And, and under, under this under this sovereignty, we, we find the attributes of God. That God is, he's, he's omnipotent, saying that he got all the power. There's no power that does not belong to him. He's omniscient, uh, saying that he's everywhere at the same time. Everything stands uh, before him. Uh, and, and God is, 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 is omnipresent. Did I miss that one? He's, he's omnipresent. Right. Yeah, he's he's everywhere, and he's he's omniscient. You know all things. He's omniscient. You know all things, actual and potential. That that's the attributes of God. And, and listen, he's the life giver. 
There's no life that exists unless it comes from God. The Father has life in him and the Son has life in him. It is God's life that sustains the whole universe. He pours his life into the whole universe to keep it going. And everything that has life, whether seen or unseen, that life comes from, from God. Help us, Lord. And we say that because when you get a kind of understanding of all of that heavy stuff, then, you, then you, when, you, when it comes down to the creature, it shouldn't be hard for you to understand that God saves who he wants to save and do, does what he wants to do. And, and nobody, he said, I rule the armies of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth, so no man can say to me, what are you doing? Or no man can stay my hand. The Bible said, who can counsel God? Who can give him advice? Uh, help us, Lord. And, and so, so we come to the ninth chapter. Paul is dealing with the dealing with the, the sovereignty of God. He, he said, all, all Israel is not Israel. He said, not that the word of God was of no effect, it, that it affected those of whom it was supposed to affect. The remnant, help us Jesus, mm -hmm. just a remnant uh, that God intend to save, whether it's out of the Jews, of course, of the Jews, all the church is, is a remnant. Uh, God, and God does, he does the picking uh, and so Paul is explaining in the ninth chapter the whole situation. Uh, it says in verse 6 of ninth chapter, says, but it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are, who are of Israel, nor are all children, because they are the seed of Abraham. But an eye your seed shall be called, that is, those who are children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted, and see, and what he's, he's saying that all these big mass of people, uh, all of them is not to be, be saved. God picks and chooses. And then he said, not that the child has done good or bad, it had nothing to do with that, but, but that the, the doctrine of election may be sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he, said, he said, verse 11, he said, that for, for the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of the works but of him who calls it will say to, to, to her the older shall serve the younger as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I, have I hated uh, what shall we say then is there a righteous thing with God certainly not for he says, verse 15 to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whoever I will have compassion. And watch this. So, verse, verse 16, so then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but God who shows, who shows mercy. So it had nothing to do with the creature. In terms of being saved, it had to do with, with God, because the creature can't will to be saved. It's not of his will. Uh, uh, for, uh, Gospel of John 1 and 12 and 13, I think it says, is not according to the, the will of the flesh, the will of, the, of, of blood, but it is according to the will of God. Help us, Jesus. Yeah. God, and when we, when we get into that kind of stuff, people don't like that. Man, there's something in us that don't like that because we, we want to be able to, to participate and have something to do with our salvation, something that we, we did that, that we could stick our chest out of and boast about. We could get up into heaven and say, you know, I, I came to Jesus as I was. Mm -hmm. I, well, yeah. and, and God said, listen, I'm doing it this way so no man can stand by being boast. Mm -hmm. You can't brag about. So, so remember the third chapter of Romans, he included everybody in failure. There's none righteous, there's none who, who understand, there's none who seek after me, there, there, there's none who do it good. God included everybody in the none. Huh? And he said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And so how do you get saved then if that's, if that's the case? If, oh, well, God, God saves us. Mm -hmm. huh? it, it come from above. Yeah. It come from God's preference. It comes from him doing the selecting. It has nothing to do with sinners, because we're all sinners, all going to, was going to hell, but Christ didn't let all of us go. Huh? God chose some. If heaven had not chose some, 
If God had not chose some, then heaven would have none. Help us, Lord. And so, so where you get that from, preacher? Well, the, the first chapter of Ephesians gives us that, right? Oh, don't let me go all this stuff here. Yeah. The first chapter of Ephesians, it said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before when the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us to the adoption as adoption of sons by Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Oh, he decided just to save us. Uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't measure us to see what education is standard that we have, who your mama was, uh, did you do good today, better than you did yet. He, he listened. He, he, we, we, were all, we were all condemned. We were all headed to hell and we deserve to go. Uh, but God, out of his own good pleasure, saved us. Yes. Well, and that's, that's what we, we, we have find the problem at sometimes because when you start saying, we talk about that, you said, if he, if he saved us, did he choose not to save others? Ah, uh, if he writes some in the book, did he chose not to write others? Well, I told you his attributes, right? He's omniscient. He knows all things actual and potential. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. <laughs> and so, so he decided what to do with what he made. Huh? And so he said to Moses, he said, listen, I have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I, with those I don't have mercy, I won't have mercy on. It's just mine to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, so you find in the Bible, yeah, he, comes, he comes to rescue, he comes to rescue Paul and Silas in the jailhouse. Help us, Lord. But he leaves poor John in the dungeon to get his head chopped off. Why do it? Because the, he's sovereign. He, he saved some on this end. He, he don't save some on that end. Huh? And he got he, he does it because listen, he, 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 he's, he's God. Yes. He goes down, he goes down to, to, to the pool that's the salon. Everybody around there all messed up. Some can't walk, huh? So some man and blind and so forth and so on. All those sick people down there. And who listen, who who's coming? The barb of Gilead. The one who got healing in his ways. Help us, Jesus. Oh, he gets down there, and you know what he does? He finds the one man he was looking for. Uh, been there for the 30 years. He finds that one man. He, he didn't worry about all the rest of them. Help us, Jesus. You know why? Because, listen, he picks and he chooses. You know why he could do that? Mm -hmm. Because he's God. He's sovereign. Amen. He finds that one man. And say, will you be made whole? You remember that? Uh, and, and heal that one man. And God does that because he's sovereign. Mm -hmm. some, some people go down to the hospital and got that virus and they hook them up and they swear they're going to walk out of there. Help us, Jesus. Oh, yeah. and, and, listen, and listen, some people go down there and they, they, they got mild symptoms. The one who got the mild symptoms end up dead. And a person who got the serious symptoms, oh, yeah. they get up and walk out of the place. Well, how did that happen? Because God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. He picks and he chooses. It's his, it's his to do it. Well, well you know, you see, God is in the blessing business. Yep. He blesses his people, right? <laughs> and so we can't, we can't get mad, and most of us do, and shriek of jealousy and envy when God blesses one of the people in the church and, and, and we stand there and, and we just look into how he get there. <laughs> how she riding in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and still understand, God God blesses who you want to bless. Amen. Amen. Gonna, listen, listen. We we got we got we got eternal life. Yeah. We got eternal life. It ain't something for the future. It's something for the present for Christians. We got eternal life. Our future says we're gonna be walking on 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 streets that are paved with gold. Oh, yeah. Help us, Lord. We're gonna be in a city where there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more dying. We're gonna be in that. Listen, that's a guarantee. And we down here worrying about the, the petty stuff hmm. that somebody else had. Oh, help us, Jesus. That's yeah. But that's 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 a, that's our that's the nature. That's our nature. And so he picks and chooses, <coughs> and he said it had nothing to do with the children who not yet been born. Yeah, before you before you got here, your 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 name 
was written on the Lamb's book of life. Uh, mm -hmm. And so God, God did that. God the Father did that. Help us, Jesus. Yes. Huh? And look, this is what it says, that the cross is before the foundation of the world. So that before the foundation, before God made the world, the cross in God's mind has already taken place. And so he can forgive sinners based on that which has already taken place in eternity and bless them and save them in time. Oh, blessed man. Yes. We say we say by faith, right? And so, so the faith is, the faith is those who are looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament, he can deal with them. And the faith for those of us who are looking back at the cross. Faith, still faith, still faith. And the faith is in all that Jesus did that the Father said, this is my beloved son. Yes. And whom are well pleased. And all that he did was poured on to us, was given to us. And all that we did was put on him. And God killed him for us. Yeah. Why he did it for us and didn't, didn't do it for others? Well, because he's sovereign. He made this thing. And so when we start looking at it, and, and Paul gives a good example when he start talking about the potter. Mm -hmm. Right? He said the potter takes this piece of clay, mm -hmm. same old dead, and clay is a dead substance. They don't like in clay. Huh? Right. He, he, uh, unless, unless I know, some of y'all remember silly putty. Help us all. <laughs> Face and silly putty. Right. <laughs> Help us, Lord. And so clay don't have any life. But he said he take the same piece of clay and mold it and shape it to show his wrath. Mm -hmm. He take the same piece of clay and mold it and shape it to show his grace. And we're gonna see that. Well, wasn't that all the same piece of clay? What was the difference between the clay? There was no the different lie in the pot. Amen. What was his intent and purpose for molding and shaping it to give him the glory either this way or that way if the difference was in the pot. Mm -hmm. And so God said, listen, I'll show you. He said, he said, I'll make some for this to show my, my, my wrath and I make some to show my, my grace. Let's get to it. He said, he said, as in written, Jacob have our love, but Esau, and listen, listen while we're on that, they said, well, God is love, right? But God don't love everybody. Amen. Y'all be crazy. I mean, people, people say, God, God is love, and, and God, but God don't love everybody. He don't love everybody. He says right here, he said, he said, he said, Jacob I love, but Esau I hate. Does he love the devil? Help us, Lord. God does not love everybody. Mm -hmm. He hates sinners by virtue of the fact that he's a holy God. He has to hate sinners. Help us, Lord, because they're sinners and he's holy. Oh, bless. That's enmity that exists between the sinner and God. Amen. Oh, bless his name. And so God has to remedy that, that dilemma. How, 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 can he, how can he deliver it? Well, it's the son who came. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. Uh, it ended the warfare. The sin was what separated us from God that made the warfare what it was. And so the Son came and took all of our sins. And the wrath of God, which is the punishment for sin, was laid on the Son. Help us, Lord. Oh, yeah. oh bless his name. name. And so the warfare, the warfare, the, the warfare has been ended by the death of the Son. So now, now listen, listen, his death, and watch this, watch this, watch, watch this, watch this. His death didn't pay for everybody. Amen. Oh, Amen. help us, Lord. We start talking about this, and some of these fellas, some of these theological guys out of the pulpit say, you got to be out of your mind. God so loved the world, huh? They find that scripture. But listen, listen, his, his death did not pay for him. It's a limited atonement. So then I told you the attributes of God, right? I told you he's sovereign. So if his debt was to pay for everybody, then guess what? Everybody's to be saved. Does that make sense? What could stop us? What could stop everybody from being saved? If his debt was designed to pay an atonement for everybody, then everybody is saved. We are going to hell. Oh, help us, Lord. But that ain't the case, is it? Oh, that ain't the case, baby, because people's men are going to hell. Oh, yeah. 
help us, Jesus. His, his atonement is a limited atonement. It's limited to those of whom the Father has elected in eternity. It's designed for them. If, if that's not the case, then, then listen, Jesus was a failure. Oh, help us, Lord. He's a failure. He's a failure. And God is a failure. If it, if it, did, if it wasn't a limited atonement, if, if, it was, if it's a universal atonement, and everybody's supposed to be going to heaven, then, then God failed. He, his, his death wasn't strong enough to save everybody. Or was it designed to save everybody? No, it was not designed to save. It was designed to save the elect. The death of Christ is applied to the account of, of those of whom God would save. Help us, Lord. Yes. And notice, notice, notice what Jesus said. I'll show you the difference. He said, he said I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't come to save the righteous. That's a category. He said, I came, I came to save sinners. Huh? That's two, that's two different groups. So now, so now if, if, he, if his atonement was for everybody, he'd have said, these on this side and those on that side. He said, I didn't come for that. Mm -hmm. I came to save sinners. Yes. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help mm -hmm. us, Jesus. So, he, he came and, and listen, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask to be saved. Did you ask to be saved? No. <laughs> Help us, Lord. You didn't ask to be saved. Hey, what happened to you? God the Spirit had to work on your depraved mind. Look at Acts 13 and 48. It said, it said, it said, they who was ordained huh, to eternal life believed. Hey, what are you talking about? He's talking about those of whom God has saved in eternity. Huh? He saved them. He ordained them. And because he ordained them, then they believe. Belief is a, is a, is a subsequent action. The primary action was that they were saved already in eternity. Oh, yeah. Did you see that, sister? Yes, sir. I'm mess around here now. I know you got four eyes, but let's put them to use. Help us, Lord. Lord. Um, and so, and so, and so it's a subsequent act. We, we are saved. We believe. We believe because we were ordained to believe. The Spirit had to come in and mess and, and open up and give life to this depraved mind and present the gospel. Watch it. Present the gospel because that's the means by which men are being saved. It's the power of God unto salvation. salvation. Good God Almighty. And so the gospel is preached. What is the gospel? Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Huh? And listen, if, if the spirit take it and, 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 and quicken your mind that you believe that that death, death burial, and resurrection is for me, he died for me. Mm -hmm. He died for me. Yes. <laughs> oh, help us, Jesus. And in theory, until it applies to me, then it becomes subjective. The spirit make it subjective to me. He died for me. Oh, when that happens, when that happens, my spirit comes alive. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. My spirit, I start, I start getting the headlines from heaven and the revelations from heaven. Now all that stuff I have in my mind, that's on this level, it got to be, be transformed. Help us, Lord. And that's, what the, that's the process that the spirit does. He's busy about transforming my mind that I believe what God says. Oh, listen, I'm from another world. I mean, I may look like an African, but I'm from another world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this world is not my home. All right. So what, Jesus? And listen, if it falls apart or disintegrates any moment, any hour, it's okay with me because it's not my home. Oh, help us, Jesus. You know, I'm different. I mean, you can't see it all the way from the outside, but there's something that's happening in the inside. Yes. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being metamorphosized. I'm being, metamorph I'm being transformed. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and let me tell you, I don't know what I, sh what I should be, but I do know this. When he shall, when he appear, I'm going to be just like him. That's like him, yeah. That's right. I'm waiting. Help. But salvation is, is of God. Is a God. And so when you get folks talking about, <clears throat> say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe this, that, and that, what's so forth and so on. You know those prayers that they give it, and that you all you got it, you're, you're saved. That don't save nobody. <laughs> that's, what, that's why the church is 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 is, is, is that doesn't have any power. It's impotent. Because it's filled with folks that have a religious experience, but not
not a God experience. Mm -hmm. And there, there it was, there it was, Jesus could come running up to Jesus' face with all the rest, with all the rest, with, with, with all the rest of us is ushered into heaven, and they're looking for their blessing, and they're gonna come talking about, Lord, uh, what about me? Uh, I did this, I did that, you said, depart from me. Mm -hmm. How are you workers every day? I made you, but I don't know you. Help us, Jesus. Oh, yeah. He knows his own. He knows his own, and then he deposits in his own his Holy Spirit. That's the difference. Help us, Jesus. He knows his own, and to lay claim on us, he placed in us his Holy Spirit. No man can call Jesus Lord, but by way of the Holy Spirit, he puts him in us. Help us, Jesus. And he's at work leading and guiding us into all, to all truth, making us to be more like him and less like us. Help us, Jesus. God is doing it. God is doing it. And we we didn't we didn't reach up and grab him. The Bible said, you can't reach up and grab him, bring him down. You can't reach below and pull him up. Nah, that don't happen, baby. That he finds us and saves us according to his good pleasure. And if you've been saved, man, you you think about all that God has done and all that he has in preparation for you. Oh, help us, Lord. I mean, you can't, you can't help but wake up in the morning and tell him thank you. Oh, and as you yeah. travel along the street, tell him thank you. And, and, and the spirit begins to move within you. Help us, Lord, to, to generate praise and worship. You, you do know that that's what he is doing, huh? <laughs> I know y'all, y'all, y'all listen to the Bobby Blue Blade and if you, if you, you know, you, you, they say you want my love. Don't walk on, don't walk on my, my love with your shoes on, that kind of thing. And <laughs> help us, Lord. I'm, I'm talking to this age group. Help us, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, never heard that one. I, I haven't even thought of the play when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> help us, Lord. And so, and so, and so, so we are saved because we are saved because of what God did. Yes. Huh? It's, all, it's all about, it's all about Him. This whole theater of life. It's designed by God, the whole theater, everything. And you notice, you notice it, it, it involved the whole world because the whole world, and he's synchronizing everything. Some nation rises up and some nation falls. Some nation is obscure and some nation is coming into the limelight. God is doing that. Mm -hmm. He works his own world. Uh, and he's going he's gonna to bring it to a conclusion, a good end. A good end for the Christians. Help us, Lord. We're waiting on him. Help us. We're, we're actually waiting on him. If he was dead, it'd be something different. But we're waiting on him. We're waiting on him. And, and listen, our faith says that he's going to show up right on time. Oh, yes. And if all the signs say, listen, in the last day, men should be loving themselves, our children be ungrateful or thankful, our breakers of truths, and so forth and so forth. You know, he, he got all that stuff. His headline was already for 2,000 years. He had the headlines up to date. All you had to read the newspaper. We, 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 are, we are on our way out of here. Help us, Lord. We are on our way. So regardless of what kind of sickness or diseases or so forth, it, it, can, only, it can only cling to you in this world. Oh, yes. But it can't cling in the next world. Help us, Lord. And so God, God has promised to keep us. And then the worst thing is that Father keep them from the evil. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, I'm not asking you to, this is prayer of the 17th chapter, he said, of John, he said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to keep them. Uh, while they're in the world, keep them. Oh, bless his name. And, and can't, can't, can't you sense he's, he's keeping you? Oh, yes, he uh, That if he didn't keep you, that we'd be in a world of hurt. Oh. We'd be in a world of God did not keep you. Oh, bless his name. We'd be in a world of hurt. And just, just the idea of the consciousness that, listen, that God has his eyes on us. Oh, yes. Help us, Lord. He got his eyes on us. He watches us. And someday, someday, listen, I'm over, some things he permit to come our way. And some things he, he won't let come our way. And the things he let come our way is for a specific purpose. The whole design of your existence and your life and you being saved is that you give glory to God. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's the only reason why we're living. 
That's the only reason why you live it. That you live your life, right? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So you live your life as a, as a, as a, as a response to your salvation. I've been saved and I'm going I'm to live like I've been saved. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. I need help. I need help. Oh, yes. I need help. Oh, yes. This, this, ain't, this ain't no long range. I need some help. And so, so, so I'm dependent every day on, on, on the Holy Spirit. It said, walk in the Spirit. And you should not fulfill us. So, so I, need, I need heaven to send me help. So, so every day, God, God checks his supply. And he's the only one that can give when I give it away. He checks his supply of grace. He said, yeah, here, Frank here. Let me send Frank some, some, some new grace and some new mercy this morning. Wow. That I was in the bed. I was going down. But when I felt that grace and grace, I could get up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Said last week, and, and sometimes folks, folks get angry when you, when you, you say what the Bible says that God saves some and choose not to save others. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the doctrine of reprobation is always in place. That is, that God reprobate men for, for hell. God does. He said, I raised up Pharaoh. I, ra I raised him up. I, ra I raised him up. I, I raised him up. I raised, him, I raised Pharaoh up for a specific purpose to show my, my power. And yeah. to kill him, that the world may know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, he said, I hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. Huh? He hardens the sinner's heart. He hardens their heart. Help us, Lord. Yeah. Now, now you get to you get to and you, got, you, got, you get to how can if God Paul said God did that? Why, why, what's the problem? What's, what, how can he blame folks? And, and Paul said, Listen, you can't ask God that kind of crazy question. <laughs> He's God. <Yeah. laughs> He's God. He does what he want to do. Huh? And so listen, listen, listen. How can God, how can God judge, judge the sinner when the sinner can't help himself to be saved? What judgment, what standard does God use? Whatever standard he uses, he's right, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And so he judges the sinner on, on, on his natural ability. We got supernatural ability. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit come and live in us. But but they didn't have they don't sinners who are not saved, you know, God gotta look at them from, from this perspective, that it is not what they 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 can't do, is what they won't do. Yeah. Now this this church is open, right? Amen. There are no guards and stuff on this about the doors and kick people out. Men, men understand their distance from God. Oh. That they need they need a, a, a some spiritual help. They understand that. And you take them out, they'll say, but well, will you pray for me, please? And they pray. Pray, pray, say a prayer for me, preacher. Huh? Well, why don't you come out of here and pray for yourself? Amen. Yeah. So they understand it ain't what they can't do, it's what they will not do. Mm -hmm. And they will not do because men love darkness, darkness rather than light. Mm -hmm. Because they deep. And so God will judge them. The Bible says to, 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 to the man, it says, search the scriptures. Yeah. They don't pick up no Bible nowhere, you know. It's the end of the talk about me. They, they, they can pick up a Bible. You can leave Bibles on. You can leave, you can leave, you can leave, you can leave five hundred dollars in the Bible. Put it on, look at it, just leave it sitting anyway. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, that, that nobody's gonna pick it up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you want hot money, put it in your Bible. They got to stop putting the Gideon, stop putting they wouldn't allow to put the Bibles in the hotels and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, no, no, the Gideon. They're brand new. What time they got them all together up here? Time and give away, throw them away. Mm -hmm. The Gideon Bible. If you if you if you want to hide something, just put it put it in your Bible. Cause they don't. Sinners center, want to open it up. And, both, and let me tell you something. I don't want to bust your bubble, but most time Christians don't open it up either. Amen. Uh, help, help Amen. Amen. And the worst thing I, I hate when as a pastor to come to church and see people with, with, with brand new Bibles. Uh, no, 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 like a finger and flip the page of it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ought to be wearing, you ought to be wearing these things out. Mm -hmm. I got Bibles, I got Bibles here. I, I can't remember the last time I bought a Bible. Mm -hmm. They got folks that come into this church and leave their Bibles and never come back for it. Never call the church and listen. I lost my left my Bible at your church. I got I got my four or five Bibles back there like that. Mm -hmm. I, this was, 
This one here, somebody left this bottle. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, of whom they said he was not the Messiah. Mm-hmm. 
and they're going to accept him as being the Messiah. And they're going to preach throughout the whole known world, and they're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel is going to be preached throughout all the world. Help us, Lord. Even, even in the millennium period, they're going to preach the gospel. Help us, Lord. They're going to, because that's the only way men can be saved, is by way of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not by words. Not by religion, but by preaching the cross of Christ, that men are saved from hell and saved from death and sin, and men become the, the adopted sons and daughters of the living God. And not only does he adopt us, but he gives us our inheritance. Oh, my God. I never had nobody. Daddy could leave me nothing but alone, but, but help us, Jesus. But, but Jesus, oh, listen. Yeah. God has given me an inheritance. It has more, it has more to do with than just things and stuff. Our inheritance is God himself. <clears throat> and he gets us. Help us, Jesus. Yes. We'll continue the next, next Bible class. So take all that down and remember those attributes I gave you because those are important. And remember the word sovereign. God is sovereign. Yes. And if you can go to bed with that at night and wake up the next morning, and understand that that principle, you you good, you're ready, and you can build up build up on it. Uh, whatever happened in your life, it did not catch God by by surprise. And, and listen, he he, he 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 watches us, he observes us, because our life is in His hand, and He can do the same for all of us at the same time. That's why He's God. Oh yeah. All right. This is Rep. C. L. Franklin. This is our Wednesday night Bible class. Remember on the first Sunday, which is, don't, it's not this Sunday coming up now, it's the fifth Sunday. Yes. The first Sunday, the first Sunday of June, I think it's around the 7th. And when you come in, wear your mask. Some of y'all might be ugly, but wear your mask anyway. We can't have, we need, we need to be able to communicate, so one of the safe precautions is to wear, is to wear masks when we come. I don't think we'll need gloves, because we're not doing the shaking of hands and this kind of thing. But we'll be so happy to see you, and come and be part of our, our, our church service. Uh, we thank God for you. We pray for all of our members. We've been praying for Sister, Sister Prosper uh, okay, at West Jefferson Hospital. Uh, I forgot to mention last Bible study, Sister Cynthia, uh, she, she's doing well. She's going day by day. And uh, she, she said she's grateful for the Lord just to be able to do day by day. Amen. And so pray for this church and pray for your church if you're not, you don't belong here. And uh, I pray that God will rise up the church in these last days and that it may be effective, that it may that it may show the kind of fellowship and love that God created us for us to do. So this is C.L. Franklin. We out of here, baby. I'm going to find some food. Amen. Amen.